Remember guys, if you want cheap games like Lord of the Fallen while we wait for Bloodborne for just 25 euros, make sure you go and check out G2A, links in the description. Hey guys and welcome back to another Dark Souls 2 video. Uh, so it's been a long time since I started uploading a lot of PvP videos here on the channel. Uh, I wouldn't consider myself nowhere near the best player or anything like this, but uh, I have had a quite a bit of experience and a lot of fun playing some PvP uh, with all kinds of weapons. And I thought it's time, uh, since we're only like less than a month away for Bloodborne, I think it's time for me to uh, let you guys know what are, in my opinion, the 5 best PvP weapons on Dark Souls 2. So, without further ado, let's get on with it. So starting off in number 5, we have probably the most underrated weapon in Hall of Dark Souls 2, if not in the whole Soul series in my opinion, of course it is the Butcher's Knife. I really cannot understand why we don't see this more often than PvP and in my opinion it's a really load of fun to use this weapon. Uh, it's got a few downsides to it, that's why it's not in the top 3 or anything like that, but um, to be honest, the downsides ain't that bad, especially with all the upsides it's got, but uh, we should probably go ahead and mention those downsides. Um, the worst downside for it is weight, but it's not that bad. I mean, you probably have to sacrifice a bit of armor and everything, but yeah, whatever. Um, the other thing, no counter damage, but no big deal. It's got enough uh, output damage on it anyway, but still. And a lot of people say the two-handed R2 is, is a downside, but in my opinion, it's not actually that much of a downside. It's, it's not an upside, but it's not too bad. You know, you can catch a lot of people off guard with the R2 uh, when they don't expect it because it's the only weapon what has it, you don't really see it that often. I'm pretty sure a lot of people don't even know that uh, that attack actually exists when, they're, when they've never used this weapon before because you don't see it that much. But yeah, that, if, if you want downsides, that's the only downsides I can think of. Now upsides, uh, it's got, it's, it's not got that much, but the, uh, the upsides it's got are brilliant upsides. I mean, the tracking on this weapon, if you use the R2, um, one handed, if, these, if, if they dodge the first one, they're going to get hit by the second one. The tracking on it is just so perfect. I mean, as long as they're in the range of the weapon, if they dodge the first one, they're going to get hit by the second one. Even if they try and roll away, it's just not going to happen. They're, they're going to get hit and pretty badly with the output damage on this weapon. Uh, saying that, uh, the I mentioned before that the R2 on the two handed is pretty bad for a lot of people, but. The follow up with the R2 for two handed is really really good and it's got a whole bunch of range on it and it catches rolls so badly. I mean pretty much every attack on this uh, weapon except the uh, two handed R2 catch a lot of the rolls especially when they're rolling uh, backwards but just, just the uh, swipe it's got on it just catches, it's got a lot of frames of damage so it catches like most of the rolls. Uh, the requirements for this is I think it's like 25 strength and maybe 8 dexterity or something like that. I could be wrong, but uh, it's really not much of a deal, and a lot of the most builds will be able to use this. Uh, and even if you don't max the damage out and buff it and all that, it's still going to do a fair amount of damage. But anyway, that is our number 5. In number 4, we have the best catalyst on the game, which is actually a sword. So, yeah, uh, this is the blue flame. Uh, as you all know, this is the uh, mage's must-have sword if you are going to be an aggressive mage. Uh, so basically, this sword uh, will will act like a catalyst, and if you buff the actual sword with uh, crystal magic weapon, it will actually buff uh, all your spells too. So if you have crystal magic weapon on this weapon, it will be the best catalyst in the game. I mean, if you you can hit for like a thousand damage, just like. Just like that with this one, it's so fast, it's got the Mace's move set, uh, it's got a poke and roll in attack. I mean, I, I really can't think of any downsides. I mean, if you count it as a downside, um, I guess the only downside I can think about is that you can't really splash this weapon into any build. I mean, you have to make a build specifically for this weapon. Um, because you can't just uh, make this, or you can't just put this weapon in any builds. Uh, but yeah, I mean... And even like the, and even just the physical attacks uh, with crystal magic weapon on this, they, they can hit for so much damage, uh, and that with the mace move set is like extremely good. And like I said before, I really can't think of any downsides to it. I mean, what more can you ask for? It's a fast sword, extremely powerful sword. It acts like a catalyst. If you use crystal magic weapon, it will buff the spell so much, and it will be pretty much better than every catalyst on the game. I mean, you can't really ask much more for a sword. Uh, I guess you need at least something like 40, 50 intelligence if you want to make this build as good as it will get. It's not worth using it if you, if you don't have uh, 
a lot a lot of intelligence that's the only downside like i mentioned before you can't just splash it into any other class but yeah i mean if you build the class correctly how it's intended this is probably going to be one of the best mage aggress at least aggressive mages uh build you can you can have so yeah Number three goes to the Red Iron Twin Blade. Um, this weapon, I didn't actually know about it until like a week ago, but I tried it out, as you know, if you watch my PvP video. I think that's actually my latest PvP video. Uh, but anyway, I was just amazed by this weapon. I mean, this probably deserves a high spot on the list uh, for a lot of people, but, you know, uh, I couldn't really put it above the first and second place. <laughs> but anyway, um, downsides first. Uh, the only downside, if you think about this weapon, is probably how open the moves leave you if you miss. But obviously if you hit them, they're probably going to be dead anyway. But, but if you miss, it could be a problem. So it, you probably need to get some taken use to some of the um, moves, especially the first R1 and R2 of the single-handed one. They're the worst ones to, to miss with. Um, obviously the it's got it's a twin I mean come on it's a twin blade it, it's got a spin to win move it's got a poke attack with the R2 single hand which is which is brilliant I mentioned that on the video a few times I, I'm, I was really impressed by that move uh, the R2 uh, double hand if you hit them with the spin the second like it's the spin to win it's the second R2 um, it hits twice and it's just going to annihilate him I don't think I've seen anybody survive that to be honest and it's probably pretty much impossible to because if you've got this at max stats with um, Sacred O's, Sunlight Blade, um, the the Gauntlets, I mean this probably does a thousand damage per R2 and it does two, it hits twice if you hit with both spin to win uh, moves so yeah it's, it, the, the damage is just pathetic, I mean you can give it even like, you can give it three more downsides and it just it doesn't matter because the damage is just just ridiculous, I mean it's like two hit kills 90% of the chance. So yeah, I don't think I even have to um, say much more about this weapon. I mean, it's a twin blade with like great sword damage on it. And it's just pathetic if you are uh, upgraded to max. So yeah, that's our number three. Moving into spot number two in our top five weapons for PvP and Dark Souls 2. I'm pretty sure everybody expected this to be in first or second. It's probably one of the most bullshit weapons in Hall of the Soul series. Uh, but yeah, it is the Ice Rapier. You get it from a DLC, which pissed quite a bit of people off as well in its time being. So let's just quickly get the only bad thing about this weapon out of the way, which is it's only got poke attacks. That's the only bad thing about it. So if you miss the first one, you're probably going to miss the rest of them. But, 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 it isn't in number two for, for no reason at all. So... As long as you can land those poke attacks, uh, you infuse it with um, magic, uh, you put a crystal magic weapon on it, that's it. Just just press anything you want, you're going to win. Just, you, there's so many possibilities, you just can spam R1, you're going to win. If you spam R2, as long as you hit him, you're going to win. Uh, if you go right up to him, hit the R2 and um, hit him with the sword, they're dead. They're, it's probably going to do an insta-kill in a lot of cases, and uh, it has been known to be done. So yeah, the amount of damage in this thing is ridiculous. The only tip I've got is just do not um, infuse it with anything what is not magic because um, magic will buff the projectile from the R2 and it's actually quite a fast projectile if you if you spam it with the R2 button it's quite fast and it will probably actually hit somebody every now and then unlike a lot of the other projectiles but yeah um, infuse it magic um, crystal ice um, crystal magic weapon that's it you've won <laughs> right so it's time for the best weapon for pvp and dark souls 2 in my opinion at least and i'm pretty sure if anybody's watched all my pvp videos you know what it's going to be you can see it coming and, and even if you haven't you probably know it's coming too if you've had quite a bit of experience in pvp but uh here you go guys it is nonetheless then the warp sword i mean i don't even like okay let's let's get the bad things out of the way that done so yeah anyway uh the good things um pretty much everything I mean there's just no bad thing about this sword I mean if you're gonna use any other weapon why not just use this weapon just why not it's fa it, it, I mean it's fast I mean it's not just fast it's, it's just ultra fast I mean the first R1 attack is just instant I mean it's not getting away from that I mean come on it's fast it is ultra strong for for that kind of weapon I mean it's six seven hundred damage per R1 that's just ridiculous I mean what else? I mean, it's light. Um, you can pretty much wear as much armor if you want. I mean, if you don't wear armor, you use Flynn's rings, uh, fucking gauntlets, buff it. I mean, you can buff it with 
whatever you want, it's just going to be the same because the damage doesn't really matter, it's not about the burst damage, it's about the DPS on this thing, that's just ridiculous, you can spam R1, you can spam R1 running attack, you can spam the R2, it's just impossible to get away with, and it's got a bit of phantom damage, I mean I could go on forever and ever, I mean if you wanted to go to the top tier in the Brotherhood of the Blood, just that's it, just use this, it's done, that's it. I mean, I have nothing more to say. Just try it out for yourselves if you don't believe me. <laughs> yeah, guys. So, so yeah, that is uh, my top five um, weapons for PvP and Dark Souls 2. I wanted to get this video out before Bloodborne comes out. Um, just to let you guys know what my opinion is. I'd really love to hear your opinion in the comments down below. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe. And we will see you next video.